So what? It's just sex. Wait a minute. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Ron. I'm Janelle. And you're listening to... So what? So, uh, it's, it's just, just sex. sex. And this week, we have a special guest for we our 10th episode. Our 10th anniversary. Our 10th <laughs> week anniversary. We're <laughs> millennials. We celebrate what? We celebrate weekly. It's we our 10-week anniversary. Why not celebrate weekly? It's we should. exciting. Every, every week, we celebrate with an awesome show. And this week's show is huge. Huge. We have Whitney from the New Stepford. Say hi, Whitney. Hi, guys. Hi. Thanks for coming on to our show. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So Whitney is a blogger slash media icon in the worlds of Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. She's been on or at least spoken about on so many shows. Weren't you on like where they talked about you on Good Day New York or Good Morning really? America? It was the Today Show. The Today wow. Show, even bigger. That's incredible. Because the Today Show is like <laughs> it's everywhere. Huge. It's it is huge. That is. I think it's huge. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind if someone talked about me on the Tomorrow Show. <laughs> like and <Right>. on, <laughs> like in any show, I'd be all about it. So, um, so Whitney with the New Stepford, you do different videos and blogs and on the internet, and you kind of talk about everything. I try. I think, you know, marriage and raising children and being a woman in the same age, it's, there's a lot of facets going on. And the more people putting their perspective and their stories out there, the more we can strengthen and align and, you know, be like, oh, I'm less alone. Okay, somebody else is going through that, too. So I don't know. I'm totally unqualified for everything, <laughs> but I'm just doing it. <laughs> I think you're. I think you're. Ve- laughing. I, no, I think you're very qualified. I, you know, I when I looked at a, a a lot of your stuff. You know, before obviously having you on, and you definitely <laughs> you're totally relatable. And it's it's stuff that doesn't get talked about a whole lot because maybe we're embarrassed or maybe we're like sh- ashamed because we don't have our shit together like a hundred percent of the time. Um, but this is real fucking life. It's real life, you know, real life situations mm-hmm. and uh, scenarios that we find ourselves in as mothers and wives and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And, and it's not a contest, right? Like I think that we sometimes are constantly comparing and I think social media is, is definitely part of that problem. Right. But you guys are millennials. I don't know if you've hit 40 yet, but there is something very liberating about turning 40 and, mm-hmm. and giving no fucks about what people. Oh, mm-hmm. can we say that? Yes. Oh, you can totally say fucks. Yeah, we can say everything. Oh, we yeah. Want. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> giving no fucks about what people think yeah. about you anymore. And it's, it's interesting in that you, like, I was thinking about this the other day because I'm going through a friend divorce with, with someone and the whole Marie Kondo thing where we're getting things out of our closet. But I also think that there's a parallel where you have to Marie Kondo your life with people Mm -hmm. and recognize that they brought you joy and they added value at at certain times in your life that that they, that you needed them. And then it's okay to kind of be like, you're no longer really bringing me joy and and letting those people go. And that's, I mean, I'd love to unpack that a little bit because I'm not proud of myself in it. I'm a bit of a coward. I'm not really addressing it the way I should um, by like going to them and saying, you know, this is what hurt my feelings. I'm kind of ghosting them. And so <laughs> I'm, I'm not evolved. Yeah. I'm not evolved enough on my own path yet, but I'm hoping that I can get there. And you know, I've had those moments. I've, ho- I've had those moments too. It's funny that you say that because I've had, I, I did turn 40. I turned 40 in December and <clears throat> you're totally right with the not giving a fuck. Like you're just like, I am, I'm getting older. I I just you just give less shits about what people think of you and then also yeah. you're not like trying to pretend anymore that you want to be friends with someone who doesn't add value to your life. Like it's a waste of your time. And it's like I don't have time yeah. for you. And it doesn't mean that I hate you. It doesn't mean that, you know, like you're dead to me completely, but I 
I definitely have like recognized that being older. Like in my youth, I'd be like, whatever, like I'll just have shitty people around me. It's all good as long as I'm having a good time, kind of. And they don't like shit on me. Literally, I'm good. You know, they can hang around, even though like maybe they be, they're using me or just like using me for my car when I was younger. Like I was the only one with a car and like whatever, just hop in, even though you probably don't give a shit about me, but I like having you around. Right. But now like that I'm older, like I got my own shit going on. Like I don't need to pretend anymore. But that is a hard that is a hard thing to do. Like it's 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 hard to realize, first of all, and then it's hard to actually put that in a play. Like if you realize that someone that you've you've been friends with is someone that you really don't have like aligned views with and you know, maybe they, I don't know, like I have friends that just talk about themselves like 125% of the time and they really don't give a shit about what's going on with you. And that's really frustrating because I, as a friend, I feel like there should be like a back and forth. But this is a really good, I mean, you brought up like one of the most amazing points and I definitely think that you need to coin this because right now there's that person that's on Netflix who's all about cleaning out your like your room and <laughs> decluttering your life oh yeah what's her i forget her name but she, it's and a that's phenomenon. the marie kondo yeah. right yeah that's what you were saying yeah marie kondo yeah mm-hmm. so um there there is something to be said about marie kondoing your friends yeah and i think that you should come up with a phrase and then totally <laughs> coin that because that is a real thing i've, I've actually gone through that over the last two years i feel like when janelle and i kind of had our moment where things weren't going really well i realized i didn't really have a lot of friends that i could turn to who I've known for my whole life. And then I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, time to, to regroup and clean out my, clean out my closet. Yeah, that's true. You, yeah. You, yeah. Especially if you're going through a hard time, I feel like, you know, your true friends kind of, they come out and if they don't, it's like, Oh, oh I see you. I see you for who you are. That's fine. I don't need you yeah. around. <laughs> but that's an amazing yeah, my friend said it, She came up with a really good phrase for it. Cause I was kind of going, you know, I was, it was, you know, word vomiting out my story to her. And she just took a deep breath and she goes, there are some people that are just black holes of energy. And once you realize that, that they're taking more than they're giving, right? you do, you kind of just go, okay, thanks. That's mm-hmm. cool. But I'm good. And then someone else said like 10 years ago, I was like, oh, I, I like her. She's kind of damaged. And, you know, I think I can help her. And my friend who was about 10 years older <laughs> than me at the time said, I'm done taking on projects. Yeah. That's true. And that stuck with me because I was like, that's so true. At some point, you're like, I don't need to fix other people. Mm-hmm. Like, it, That's not my job anymore. No. And I was like, it's like, that's kind of liberating, too, to hear somebody else say, no, no, I don't do that. Do you think that it has to do, I don't know if this is a female-male thing, but certainly in, we'll our, find out. in our dynamic, it's a female-male thing. But I'm like the fixer where I'm like, no, I could totally fix this, whatever it may be. It's like super broken. I'm going to mm. fix it whether it be like an emotional issue or something around the house or whatever it may be. It's like, I know I I can tackle this. I can do this. And like at this age, I just don't have the energy to do it as much anymore. (laughs) Well, it's also like the whole, you you know, you're raised to be selfless. So you feel as though you need to give more than you get. But then sometimes, especially when you get older, you start to realize it's okay to be selfish. And I know we talked about this a little bit on our podcast, but selfish is, Mm -hmm. is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people make it seem as though if you are like, no, I feel like this should be 50, 50. And then say, Oh, well you're just being selfish. And it's like, no, it's respect for Mm -hmm. myself, self care. Yeah. And we talk about self care a lot on this show. Yeah. It is self care. And it's mental self care. That's such a, Oh my goodness. What an amazing topic. It's so true. Okay. I like how you well, call it a friend divorce. <laughs> a friend divorce. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I mean, you guys have, you've got the littles right now, right? How old are your kids? Oh, no. Our, we have olds. We have <laughs> 22 and 18, our, our yeah. kids. Oh, my God. You guys are so young. Yeah, we started, we started kind of young, young. Started very young. We just celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary on Thursday, We too. did. <laughs> okay, I have to recalibrate my brain. Like, I totally thought you guys were in your, like, early 20s and had babies oh, okay hold shit. on I, do, 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 do. I mean i wish i was in my early 20s but not with babies with not with babies she's the best you guys look good oh thank, thank you. you it's all the wine <laughs> that's the secret oh my god we, let's talk about that in a second because i'm on a diet <laughs> hashtag jenny craig shout out love them yeah i we did can talk that. about jenny craig in a second i did that for a but little bit yeah i like them it's been great mm-hmm they're, they are so good and been so wonderful, and I've learned so much, and I'm down nine pounds. That's awesome. Um, Congratulations. So they have, 
But I also think you guys are busy and Ron's doing his thing and there's your time spliced. Mm -hmm. Like you, you wake up every day and go, okay, I got two hours. I got to do the podcast and I get the kids Mm -hmm. and you're back to Ron's point. He's like, okay, I only have so many hours of the day Mm -hmm. and I want to make sure those hours are adding value to myself, to my community, to my marriage and anything else we just don't have time for. Yeah. So we don't have time for the bullshit. We just don't have time for the bullshit. We don't. It's especially not now, because when you when you have so little of it, we didn't realize how much time we didn't have. You know, if you rewind, I guess like almost eight months to a year before we started under under all these endeavors, it's like we kind of had time to just sit around the couch and just watch shows. And now it's like, oh my goodness, every weekend is filled with some activity, and we're either at a show mm-hmm. that I'm doing, or we're working on the podcast, or we're trying to promote it. It's just like, yeah. And then all of a sudden you have someone who's like, hey, I need to like suck the life out the room. And you're like, no, thank you. Yeah. And especially oh, like, uh, you know, I think as women, too, we um, we beat ourselves up a lot and we like hold ourselves to some standard that like nobody else has. But we have for ourselves. So I don't need anyone in my life like making me feel worse about myself than I already feel. <laughs> so. <laughs> you know, like, not that I feel terrible about myself. I'm just saying, like, we're hard on ourselves, and we always think we could do better. I could have done that better. I could have done this better. I could have, like, I don't know, whatever. Whatever the situation is. I could have done better at work. I could have d- done better raising my children in a certain way. Like, mm. so I don't need anyone, like, judging me or being a piece of shit in my uh, life. And I'm just... Th- I don't know you very well, but I'm pretty confident you're kicking ass. Um, <laughs> Thank you. But the, as, like because am. because I'm partial narcissist, I don't have that. <laughs> like, I go through my life like I am kicking this thing's ass. That's fucking awesome. Like, yeah. Nobody does it, but, but that comes with a downside because w- when you are partially, and Hank's was this way too, from what I think Ron, I got of talking to Hank, he yeah. kind of has that edge too like yeah. you you are not as empathetic or sympathetic as i could be as a human being like i didn't get that gene <laughs> you know janelle, head- janelle didn't either and a lot of times she always says on the show when she instead of using narcissism she just says i'm not cocky well i'm not cocky i mean i think that's come with age though <laughs> yeah. like i i wasn't born this way i was i was i felt really bad for like many many years but then i think when i turned 30 i turned like a little bit of a corner and then, like from thirty to forty, I'm just like feeling myself even more. I'm still, oh, I'm good. still, I'm still hard on myself. Like I expect a lot. I like challenge myself constantly, and I want to be successful like in anything that I do. But um, yeah, I'm not cocky, but I'm I'm pretty badass. I mean, I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, good. I believe that you are. Thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness! So with all of this. So you you start blogging for so people who don't know. So uh, Whitney was a or and is a blogger, and created the new Stepford. And I th- I want to say that your first breakout hit was the smashing your window of your minivan. <laughs> yeah, is that is, I think that, that would be... <laughs> is that is that appropriate? <laughs> yeah, that there was two that kind of went side by side. There was one where I was yelling at my kids to get ready, which was more <laughs> of a scripted. And then there was the window smashing one. Because that's at like 8.8 8 million a, views on just yeah, on Facebook. That, because, that's not even the people who've shared it. That's I've crazy. never even put that one on Instagram. Like I probably should. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think because we as a society love Scheidenfreude, that they were like, Look at that stupid, ugly woman <laughs> break her window. What an a-hole. And, it, you know, it's fun to laugh at people. And, it, yeah, that yeah. was a good day. Who that was, was the, a bad day. <laughs> who was the person? I love that you were laughing throughout it because I would have been like, motherfucker, like, what the fuck? You know, like, I would have been, like, screaming. And you're just, like, laughing. Like, this is, I like, I you didn't even know what to do with yourself. So you just laughed at it. But, like, who was the yeah. person that recommended slamming the door, like, super hard? Was oh, that just, yeah, a, was, like, a, a, a were listener? You, were you on Facebook Live yeah. and then someone told you to just, like, uh, if you slam it, it'll close and stay closed? Like, I have a good idea. Was that Facebook Live? Yeah, yeah it was, <laughs> it, it, if, if I may tell the story, it was yeah. one of those, like, mornings where everything, the wheels were falling off all the buses. <laughs> My son was a, I dropped my daughter off because she's in zero period because she's crazy. And then on the way from the high school 
to the junior, to the elementary school, or it must have been junior, whatever. Um, he's like, Mom, you need to stop and get me a breakfast burrito at the local cafe. <laughs> Fine, no problem. I stop in. I'm like, go get your burrito. He goes, I'm not going inside. And you saw what I look like. I'm like, <laughs> look like a homeless. I'm like, fine, I'll do that. He, for some reason, decides to let the dog out. That's why the door was open. Oh and then God. the door would not close. And so we had six minutes to get to the school. I had like two gentlemen walk up and they were kind of jiggering it. And they're like, ma'am, I don't know. We could <laughs> cut it, but then what? Yeah. So I literally drove the six blocks to his school. The dog is hanging out the back. <laughs> the windows open. It's raining. I'm like, this could not like this is you couldn't script this any better. Yeah. So there was a ton of traffic. And that's why I was Facebook living because I just thought I've got to kill 10 minutes while the traffic drives down because I don't want to drive home with the door wide open. Yeah. And then you know, cue the scene, take it from there. Just devolved. <laughs> is devolved a word? <laughs> devolved. Yeah, I like no, it. <laughs> devolved is a word, and if not, it is okay. now. <laughs> it is now. But it, <laughs> Hashtag English maker. <laughs> that, that was just so funny because it was just so, like, I don't think you could have planned it any better. No, it was. And I think that's why, you know, um, like, things like that do resonate with people because it's real because it, it's what happens and it, though the glass may not shatter on a person's car they have a day that feels like that especially when you have kids that go to different schools and we've been there we've both been there where you're having to drop one kid off at one school and another at another and then like the school start at different times so because right. because the high school was closer than the elementary school, and we were like, no, and there's no fucking buses in no. SoCal. What the fuck? We lived well, in SoCal for like uh, a minute, and there's no fucking buses. And then and then I said, so so my son's like, why are you dropping me off so early? <laughs> and I'm like, well, because your other, your brother has to get to his school, which starts sooner than yours, and I'm not driving all the way back to your school. So <laughs> you're yeah. the you're the one we like the least. So. <laughs> You have to sit here and wait in the morning. Go have breakfast at yeah. school. And you have like, two school. He's lunches like, Dad, today. but it's five a.m. and school doesn't start. Till I'm like, I don't care. I'm not. It's like yeah. either this or you walk. Not my problem. Yeah, not my problem. <laughs> there, I wish. Oh, that's my favorite. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, you go. You go. <laughs> oh, I was saying that's my favorite. Well, you can walk because we can. They both can walk to. <laughs> Their elementary, their middle, and their high school. Like they're are, they're within a ten minute walk. But you drive. But them. God for oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yep. make them walk. Yeah, my high schooler. Uh, well, now he has a car. That's new. Like a month ago, he got oh, a that car. Would be nice. It's fucking crazy. It's super nice. I just wish he could oh. buy me alcohol when he goes out of the house now, but I have to wait till he's twenty one for that. <laughs> but <laughs> but when our oldest is when our oldest is home with us, Fantastic. we will definitely send him to take to oh, buy us def- alcohol. He's twenty two. I'm like, yeah. I need wine. Go yeah, to the store. Go take take our card. Yeah. Go get us wine. This is payback for all the times drive I us drove to karaoke. You. Pick us up at midnight or <laughs> yeah. one a.m. from karaoke. Yes, exactly. It's exactly. Like, oh my God, I didn't even think that about that. You got a designated driver now. Oh yeah. Oh, we have. Yeah, we oh. have two designated drivers right now. I'm like, you guys, you got some payback coming your way. Oh like, yeah. Like, you need to pick me up, even if it's two a.m. I'm gonna call you drunk, and I'm gonna make you pick me up. And w- even <laughs> even better, our lease is up in November, and we're gonna definitely move into a place where there's not enough room for children. <laughs> And be like, look, we can't really, we, we're just, we're in a, we're in a studio now and you can sleep on the couch, but it's like 10 feet from the bed. I don't know if you guys want that, but. Yeah. Nobody no, wants to see that. We no. have, a, we have, um, they're not even our kids right now. They're just roommates. We have like a house full of roommates yeah. right now. Yeah. We have, uh, my younger son and his girlfriend who lives across the street, but is always here. And then we have our older son living with us and his girlfriend's here as well. So we have like six grown ass people in one house. And uh, and we still run out of things like paper towel. It's like <laughs> it's like you can't get paper oh, yeah. towel. Oh, but the other day I I was traveling for work. So I'm in L.A. and Ron's texting me like there is not one fucking clean fork or spoon or knife or plate or bowl. Everything is dirty in the sink with five grown ups in the house. Nobody could wash a dish. I'm not doing wow. it. Wow. I'm not yeah. doing it. Isn't that some it. bullshit? <laughs> That's bullshit. Well, I have two questions for you. Yes, go. First, okay, since this is a sex podcast, do, are you comfortable with your kids having their girlfriends 
spend the night or what are your rules about that? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. Um, cause the thing is, it's like, um, with our kids, we have ensured that like everything is like copacetic per se. So it's like positive. It's yeah. not like a negative So, thing. so like with our oldest, we, we took it upon ourselves to make sure that, you know, his girlfriend's on birth control and that they know what's up. And what's great is that with our oldest is that he is totally like, shy Mm -hmm. super shy Mm -hmm. so like i'm pretty like he like he would be like the furthest thing from his brain would be like if we were within a 10 mile radius he'd be like we can't touch i mean i feel like that's possible but i also i'm not naive to think that that's not and we're pretty sure that his girlfriend who listens to our podcast (laughs) by the way our (laughs) oldest son will not okay yeah but his girlfriend loves this loves the show and she'll but i'm pretty sure that she's like hey like they're they're fine no (laughs) one's gonna walk in the room and he's like get away from me like i could just see that being a thing with our youngest it is a different situation and it's kind of like one of those things where, um, you know, we kind of do this thing where he'll be like, hey, can you stay out this evening? And we're like, OK. And then on another night, we're like, hey, you need to stay out. And he's like, all right. But now that we have so many people here, we can't do that anymore. No, we can't do that anymore. It's all broken. But to your point, um, I think that as long as the conversation is had and like everyone's open about it and like making sure everyone is safe with what they're doing and you know, taking precautions to um, not get pregnant, not get diseases, which I, I don't think, I, I mean, I, I don't think that's a thing, but like, you know, not getting pregnant. That's mainly the big, that's yeah, the that's right. big one. Like, like, like if, like if like everyone could, like if everyone could have sex and not get pregnant, sex wouldn't be so bad. Yeah. Everyone would be like, yeah, go have fun. But the <laughs> fact that you have to like be responsible for a human being I mean, if you make a mistake. They're all monogamous. So I think yeah. that like n- disease is probably not, on the table for them knowing them but yeah the pregnancy thing like i wanted to make sure that wasn't a possibility and was, so we we did that and i think just like being open and, and we know prevents a lot of stuff yeah yeah we've talked to the parents and everybody's like everybody's aware of everything and it's it's just kind of like creating something different because when i was young i would have sex in a park mm-hmm. and you know what i mean and it's kind of like oh yeah sex i'd be in cars, in cars or, and yeah. like and it's just kind of like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't want, I didn't, well, not just me, but we didn't want our kids to like be, to think of this shameful act. Now, luckily for them, we are, they know that we're pretty intelligent human beings and that we can pretty much guess what's always happening. So they're always like, when we're around, they're very like, very, very careful. Yeah. It, How old are your kids, yeah. Whitney? Uh, 13 and 15. So have you had the sex conversation yet? Like, is that a thing yet? Oh gosh. Constantly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's the, my older is the daughter. And so, you know, that, you know, five, six years ago, we had to sit down and talk and we drew pictures and, you <laughs> yeah. know, this is the penis and the <laughs> yeah. ovaries. And I just remember, you know, I said that when you lose your virginity, it might hurt a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then she goes, do you think it hurt daddy too? <laughs> I'm like, Aww. I don't think so. Probably not. <laughs> Probably <laughs> not. The guys, yeah. the guys have um, all the luck. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the one thing I tell her, back to your pregnancy thing, which is do not let a dumb penis next to you because yep. a dumb penis is connected to a dumb person. <laughs> yep. And if that dumb person impregnates you, you have dumb in your life forever. I know. So That's amazing. Just no avoid that's so true that's so true because i have i have people that i know i won't name or say what relationship they're to me but you have sex with crazy and if you have a baby with crazy you're fucking dealing with crazy for like the rest of your life yes your whole life you are yoked to that and i just i've seen so many of my friends who hit 28 were so desperate to get married and have babies they got impregnated by stupid people yeah. and now they're on their second and third divorce and yeah. chasing down alimony. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. God, yeah. This, yeah. It's, it, that's a thing. And, no, and we, we talk to our kids about that stuff all the time. We do, and yeah. we're always just like crazy. will be crazy forever. Like we try to explain to them, look at us. We are totally insane, and we were the same level of insane when we first met. <laughs> and we both thought the right. other one would get better over the years, <laughs> and they never did. You know what I mean? <laughs> and if you're stuck on assuming the other one's going to change, nope. 
Nope. Nope. Because we've been nope. together for 22 years. Yeah, 22 married years. Married for 20. And when we first met, we were like, oh, I could fix them. And <laughs> yeah. nope. Nope. Janelle's just as broken Girl. today as she was then. And Fuck I love you. her for it. You're fucking no, broken. Too. I am. But I love you for it. And you love me for it. So yeah. we, we've been teaching our kids more of acceptance. Like, like <clears> you have to find that person who at their worst you couldn't still be without them for a minute. There, there's right. a, but there's a difference. Okay, let's just let's just keep it real right now. Are you, there's are you a offended difference. that I called you crazy? No, I'm not, because okay, I am cause kind of you're, crazy. You're, you're, yeah, I'm a little crazy. You're a little, a little I'm an, wackadoo. I'm an Italian New Yorker. I mean, yeah. come on. But it comes with the territory. You knew this from the beginning. <laughs> but there's a difference between, like, wackadoodle people who you would not want to fucking impregnate. Like, speaking from, like, I have two boys, so, you know, for me, it's like, like they would impregnate someone, right? Right. So, and I have again people that I know that have impregnated crazy people, crazy women, and they're dealing with lawyers and custody issues mm-hmm. and child support issues and drugs and things that, that are like nuts. But they were always there. That didn't happen after you had a baby. Those were, things were there from the beginning. So right. you should have known better to not stick your dick in crazy. I'm sorry. Like it's not worth it. Go yeah. find someone who's a little less crazy to have sex with. But you know, um, at being yeah. young, the hormones are just yeah. terrible. I know. Yeah. Yeah. That well, we we're we're organisms, right? We're here to to procreate, and when you just come down to that like cellular level, we're here to take in enough energy to get ourselves through the day, and then hopefully spawn. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's just our reduce day. our existence. <laughs> exactly. <to that. laughs> It's very basic. Yeah. <laughs> it's very basic, actually. <laughs> yeah. That's why the, the numbers of the people in the, on the planet keep going up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when, when, you, God, when, when you have that talk, and especially when you're doing it like now as opposed to when you first had it, does it get more comfortable? Because um, we have friends who we try to talk to who have kids who are in their teens, and we're like, you need to have these conversations. And they're like, oh, no, not my kid. And I'm like everybody's kid like i'm not i'm not calling you out yeah Mm -hmm. i'm not calling you out i'm just saying everyone and it's not just your kid because when you send your perfectly isolated child into the world Mm -hmm. the other kids they're mingling with aren't isolated this is why vaccines may be important it's just because just because you're not you know you're vaccinated (laughs) doesn't mean everybody else is and then suddenly everybody's got the measles it's like come on so so how do you deal with that on a daily basis I don't know if I have to deal with it on a daily basis. Um, but we, do, you know, even with my son being 13, like you will wear condoms. Yeah. You, that, that is not an option. Mm-hmm. And you know, we're not, we're not dumb. It's going to happen. Just here's what crazy pussy looks like. And yeah. sounds like, like <laughs> yeah. you got a psycho. Yeah. And you know, he was 12. He got his first love letter. Oh, wow. Oh, and snap. you know, they were, quote, dating, which basically meant they made eye contact in the hallways. That's <laughs> yeah. how seventh, sixth graders date. Um, and then one day he he text, he doesn't have a phone, so he texted her via the computer or could have been Fortnite. I don't know how he got a hold of her somehow. And he's like, it's not, you know, I don't really want a girlfriend anymore. And she, guys, I mean, this letter was so, quite honestly, I wish I had received a letter like this. Like, <laughs> you're so beautiful and your beautiful eyes and Aww. my heart pounded every time I saw you. But now I'm so sad. I don't know if I'll ever love again. I'm like, oh my oh. God. But at the same time, I'm like, this is crazy pussy. Like, yes. <laughs> She's grade, obsessed. Dude. She's obsessed already. Oh my goodness. This, that is so true. Yep. Yep. And so, you know, you just can hope that they're, that you're, and it sounds exactly good. You're modeling a healthy relationship mm-hmm. that you're leading by example. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's the best kind of thing you can do for them. Yeah. I don't know. I could be screwing the whole thing up. No. I have no idea. <laughs> we, we think that all the time, but what we try to do is we, we try to just show them what a, cause growing up in, you know, when I was, I, I'm, I was born in 76. So I would say I, I grew up in the eighties and Janelle also grew up in the eighties and we had, you know, aunts and uncles and parents that we looked at and their relationships were completely unhealthy. Oh, definitely. Every single right. one of them. Right. And, yeah. and yet they never talked about it being toxic. Mm-hmm. They just were like, Oh no, it's, it's this, is, this is just the way of the world. And I'm the, like, yeah, it's just the way that it is. And I'm like, I don't want the world to be like that. Like, yeah. Like, it's okay that we fight. I mean, we fight, but these people were like every day, their whole lives for like, 
40, 50 years. I'm like, oh, oh my goodness. I, don't, I can't even get into the level of unhealthiness that I've yeah, witnessed so, in my so life. So with our yeah. kids, we're trying to lead by example by showing what a healthy relationship looks like. And then even if when it's not at 100%, even at 80%, there's still love. Like mm-hmm. they, they've seen us have right. these, these like, they'll walk in after and they know we're fighting because like, we'll be on opposite ends of the couch and they walk in going, oh, are you guys good? <laughs> we're like, yeah, we're fine. But then by the end of the evening, yeah. they see that like a hand's on a hand or we, we're like cuddling or we say, we, we say I love you like all the time. We're just yeah. trying to show them what healthy looks like. And we feel every day right. like we ruined it. Yeah. Like no. We, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. I don't think so. I don't think I have. I, I know don't for think me, I have. do. I'm always like, damn, did I do the right thing? Did I mess but it up? These fucking kids are wonderful. I mean, I'm, I have mom goggles on, but like, <laughs> I feel like they're doing a great job in the grand scheme of like what the world looks like right now. Our kids are fucking great. I mean, we talked about Aww. our we talked about our older son like losing his virginity like at brunch one day. We were like, "So what's <laughs> going on? Did you did you fuck yet?" And he's like, well, "Actually, yeah, I did." And I'm like, "All right, did you use the condom?" Is this, he's like, "This is the shy one." This yes, is the, this shy, the shy one. one yes. yes. <laughs> God, he must have like just buried his head in his oh, pocket. He does. Like, oh, he does. Oh, no, <laughs> mom. I know he did. No, he's like, oh, God, yes. I mean, he answered me because he knows I'm not going to let up until he gives me an answer. But it's like he told me the truth. And I said, OK, um, did you use a condom? He said, yes. And I said, OK, we need to talk about birth control now because this is you you and your girlfriend are having relations like on a regular basis. So we need to talk about that now. And so we did. And it was it was like a family. And uh, actually, my sister was visiting from SoCal. And she's like, do you guys really do this? Like, this is really like breakfast conversation. I'm like, yeah, why not? It came up in conversation. I mean, I made it the conversation. So it is what it is. And they're great. Right. And if you take the stigma away, then they're not sneaking away into the backs of cars. And they're not rolling the dice because yeah. they're not having to hide anything. Right. And so that's exactly what we're trying to do. Mm-hmm. And we're trying to, and we're trying to right. bring that to other people. We've actually had people who listen to the show who I, I, I don't want to say closed minded. I feel like that's like the wrong thing, but maybe they were a little naive to how being open can affect them. And suddenly they're being more open with whether it be us or the questions that they ask us or the things that they, they want us to talk about on the show. And then suddenly they'll be like, you know, ever since I, ever since your show started, it's I feel like I'm a little bit more accepting, I think, is the thing. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's good. And now you have to translate that into the people around you. You know, don't let people make things into, you know, if you make your kids feel like sex is this gross, terrible yeah. thing you shouldn't do, they're not going to come to you because they're going to be ashamed. And they're going to be doing it anyway. Right. Yeah. But they're just not going to come to yeah, you exactly. to talk they're about They're going to do it anyway. Mm-hmm. And then you get, that's when you get teenage pregnancy. Yep. And that's when you get these poor girls that don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. God forbid, you know. Yeah. Oh, no, what's I happening was, in Missouri right now is just driving me. I mean, I did. Insane. I was. I was that person. I should have had like. I should have been a character on Sixteen and Pregnant. I was seventeen and pregnant, and I I took a I took a pregnancy test in the mall bathroom because I didn't. I couldn't take that home, and I was pregnant with my twenty two year old who's. You know, he's thriving and he he's at UC Davis and he's doing great things. And, you know, he's super fucking smart. And but I had I was so scared to go to my parents. But the thing about it was Mm -hmm. like I felt so I felt ashamed. I felt dirty. No one provided me with condoms. My dad was like, I knew you were having sex. I'm like, oh, my both of them. Oh, both my parents. I knew you were having sex. I'm like, okay. But in, in my mind, I thought, well, why didn't you get me birth control or yeah. like help me out yeah. with that? You know, they and they didn't. But, you know, I mean, like I'm a 16, 17 year old person. Like I didn't have the thoughtfulness to like, I don't know. I just didn't do yeah. that on my own. No one provided that to and, me. So. And when, when uh, our oldest turned 17 and didn't have, or make a baby. We were like, oh my gosh, we broke the we broke the cycle. <laughs> and then now he's twenty two and we're like, we're killing it. Yeah. And then our youngest is eighteen, no baby. We're like, oh my God, we won. We've made it. We won. Yeah. And if high they five, high and five, if they high wait five. till no yeah, high five. High five. And if they wait till November <laughs> and we, we get our own place and they're living on their own, we have successfully raised children without <laughs> any of the problems that we went through as children. I know, that's what I'm saying. We're wow. We win. We God, win. You guys started so young. Yeah. We did. How did you make that work? <laughs> it's been tough. It's been tough. We broke up for like a minute. We broke up for like a year, year and a half. Um, just because I think 
it, it, you know, you, you know, you're two different people. I mean, yeah. Ultimately, you're in a marriage, but you're not globbed together as one fucking person. And then and when you spend all that time raising kids, you get to kind of be distracted by the kids. Yeah. But when they become like mm-hmm. older, you start to realize when you're no longer having to take care of them 24 seven, mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I have to shit. get to know you again. As I don't really like you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. holy crap. Wait, like, who are you? Like, I don't even know you. Yeah. Like this, I did not sign on for this, <laughs> this person. It's so true. Well, I do think, especially when they're young, that you, you do parent with this military precision of, okay, you're picking up at five and you're getting mm-hmm. dinner and it really becomes this, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a burden? Uh, transac- like a, a transactional. transactional. Yeah, yeah. Transactional. Yeah. It's more just a transactional marriage, and then you know it's eleven o'clock at night, and you're like, you want to do it, and they're like, not really. Yeah. And it's not like I don't find you attractive. I'm like, I literally have had someone on my tit all day long <laughs> needing something. Like it's I just so true. don't like I don't want anything to want me. Like I just don't want to have to give anymore. Well, it, it's um, yeah, it's that, and you don't even feel like I went through a long period of time where I just didn't feel like a sexual creature. I was like, I'm just a mom, and I work, and I come home, and I take care of my kids, and that's who I am. And I don't deserve to have pleasure. <laughs> oh. Well, not like- Okay, so this is funny. It's slightly inappropriate. So, um... Perfect. I had a moment. <laughs> the, the kids the kids were gone. The husband was at work. And I'm like, I have an hour. Like, I think I'll, um, celebrate myself. <laughs> yeah. You know I what I mean? This. Yeah. And so, you know, found some good videos. Like, oh, that was fun. About three days later, I get an email that says, we know that you clicked on this naughty link. And we have you on camera getting your quote enjoyed. Oh my please, god! We saw right, that video. Please, That's great. <laughs> yeah, please wire us fifteen hundred dollars or one hundred fifty thousand. Like I don't know, only what number it was. And at first, I panicked. I was like, you know, you hit the shame spiral, and you're like, oh my god, everyone's gonna know. And then yeah. I kind of went, um, well, who cares? Mm-hmm. Everybody does it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I emailed them back. I'm like, send it out. I could use the Instagram followers. <laughs> yeah, like, that was great. <laughs> Go for it. Like, whoever wants to see and my never heard pussy. Back from them. Yeah, if, if you want to see my pussy, like, okay, see my pussy. I've had kids. I've had, like, 15 nurses yeah. in the room when I had my youngest son. Like, I've my vagina's been out there in the world. I don't really care. Yeah. The only drawback that's, that's of seeing... That's on you, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. The only reason why I would that's be upset you. if, like, 8 million people saw my dick is because then I'd be like, oh, <laughs> that's sad. I feel, like, I feel like I could have been better in that picture. You know what I mean? Like, like I would have to tell everybody, I promise you, like, it gets bigger. Like, it was, it was just that it was moment. It was the wrong yeah. angle. Like, if I knew that angle. 8 million people were going to see it, I would have used the stunt cock. Yeah, like, a I stunt cock. Right. <laughs> I would have gotten my ring light <laughs> <laughs> and like good, like good lighting. So you you bring up a you bring up something that I definitely wanted to pick your brain about, and I know that a lot of people oh are God. thinking about it because <laughs> we have. <laughs> it, it's not about masturbation per se, but um, you you know being married and having kids, and we we have gone through this, and we talked a little bit about it, but I don't feel like we've ex- expressed this enough. It's hard to keep that going you know what i mean like when when your kids are sleeping you know in the in a room in your house and then suddenly it's like it's your anniversary and you've had a couple of glasses of wine and you're just like i just want to scream and yeah. you know a lot of times people assume they have to go to a hotel and then that becomes quite costly and you're like i have to spend 500 dollars for you know well luckily for me it's like 45 minutes of extreme pleasure but sometimes it can be five <laughs> Sometimes it can be five minutes, and that's a lot of money to spend for five minutes. Three to of five minutes. <laughs> so three to five. So how, how do you keep? How do you? How do? You, how do you and your husband like? You know, keep it going. How? Because you know, it's hard. It is hard. I don't. I don't think I have a good answer for that right now because I don't think we're keeping it going at the moment. It's there's been nothing wrong with that because. Yeah, I mean, my kids are are up later than we are because mm-hmm. she's a freshman in high school. So she yeah. doesn't go to bed till 1230 or one. Yeah. And we have a tiny house and we have a bed that squeaks. Yeah. So Fuck. sometimes we're, I'm like, just get on the floor. Like, oh. <laughs> we used to and, fuck, then, and then yeah. you're like, we used to fuck in the closet. You're in your late forties yeah. having sex on the floor. Yeah. And you're like, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, my back hurts. My uh, knees hurt. My hips hurt. Like, yeah, my get Red burn on my knee. So, I, but at least you're trying I, I that. Living, yeah, but at least you're doing. We're that. trying. Yeah, you're trying because you know you could try that and have rug burn on your knees, or you could not try at all. So at least you're still trying. 
So I've been waiting. Which, to, yeah. I've been waiting to ask you this since you agreed <laughs> to be on the show. So I so you might rethink your whole reason, like being like I should have never went on that show. But have oh, have God. you have you because you have a minivan and they're quite spacious. Mm-hmm. You know, have because like I feel like because we when we lived in Arizona and our kids were little and they they were constantly around. We would like go to the garage when they would go to sleep and we would, we could be like in the car or whatever, like trying, cause we had a minivan and we're just like trying to find ways of being as far away without being outside. Yeah. So have you ever, have you christened the minivan? Is that the fantastic. <laughs> and I love you guys so much right now. Good idea or what? <laughs> I think that's brilliant. I would say this at this current moment, we are so over the top with baseball equipment that I would have a bat up my ass so quickly. There would, there wouldn't be like, I, I can't configure my body enough around like cleats and bats and balls, but I like and dog hair. <laughs> oh yeah. You'd have a hair up your ass and a bat. Uh, yeah. But I'm going to present that to the hubs. And I'm going to be like, Hey, yeah, I was on a podcast and they think we should do it in the minivan, which you will precisely go, I'm sorry, what? Because <laughs> he's, he's like East Coast conservative. Like, yeah. You don't talk about it. We yeah. don't really, like, I think if you were to listen to this podcast, I would get a very sternly worded text. <laughs> like, please stop oversharing. Yeah. Well, I, I I don't even, I mean, if he thinks this is bad, then he definitely shouldn't listen to the show. Because this is probably, like, this is one of the most vanilla of all of our podcasts. It is. And, and, and it's funny, like, my my, I was with my mother and my aunt over the weekend in L.A., and they're East Coast conservative, too. And they're just like, no, that's not you talking about that. I can't even believe you're talking about these things. And I'm just like, what is the thing? But then when I started to talk about our last episode where we had um, we met a thruple on um, Twitter, on Twitter, where there's a daddy, a little girl and a and a kitten and a kitten where they're in like a three way relationship. My mom's like, wait, what? Like she was super interested in knowing the dynamic. I'm like, I don't know. Wait, Listen. I have I, I have questions. <laughs> um, first, what the ever fucking fuck? Yeah. So so there there's three of them, and yeah. they have there's the daddy, and then there's the little girl, and then there's the kitten. But they're not little girls. They're no, grown they're, they're people. All grown people. They're all grown people, and, like and well above the age of oh consent. God. Yeah. No, yeah. they're totally of age. That's that was the thing that they were trying to dispel. Is like it's not about a child they're not actually children they're, no they're grown women but they you know he's the daddy like kind of in charge and, and he, he takes care he of he takes everyone. care of everyone and and then him and the little like his little um ha- they have a pet that they play with and they also take care of again grown ass people like fully yep. and completely like, so so the pet has like a little like <laughs> pet bed See? and what? they're taken care of what is happening right now I know. and then and you then i to said listen to the episode and I it said, was last week i'm super jealous because i did not know that i could be taken care of as a pet because i will be a pug i don't give a fuck like if i come home from work after a long day and i have my own pet bed and someone's feeding me and giving me water and then like use me when they want i'm good like i am like that's I told, an option. I, told that's, Ron, I know, no, right? I, that's I, an option. I don't I'm have so... that personality. No, like, I'd want to be the daddy. You're the daddy. I'd be that's the daddy. Fine. I have like too strong Ooh, a personality. Yeah, I'm the like daddy. the one in charge. Like, yeah, I no, there's be nothing wrong with that. Taking care of shit. You be the daddy, but I want to be the pet. <laughs> you want to be I the puppy? I didn't know that when I got home from work, I didn't have to have any responsibility. <laughs> And then I even said, yeah, I might shit or piss in a corner every <laughs> once in a while, but, you know. You can, like, lift your leg on things. Yeah, but yeah. and then you'd be like, Ron. <laughs> Ron, get and over And then, you know, as long head. as you take me for a walk, I'm good. <laughs> so here He's we gonna are. He's going to roll up a newspaper and hit you in the nose with it tonight. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's going to happen. Like, Without your fantasy. That's yeah, exactly, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. But this is so great because, like, I... I feel like one of the things that what we've been trying to do is like we've been having these really like um, guests who are very like elevated in their sexual experiences and everybody's talking about all this stuff. And we're like, we're still pretty new at just the being able to be vocal about it. Like I've been trying to get Janelle to do a podcast forever. And then she finally, you know, said, OK, I'll do it. And then she's like, what are we talking about? I was like, well, the only thing you love talking about is sex. So mm-hmm. Let's do that. So now we're doing this mm-hmm. thing. And now suddenly we're like, oh, OK, this is a thing. But like. We're still we're still pretty new at all this. We're not like these experienced, crazy sexual beings. But what we're trying to do is give a platform for people to just be like, hey, 
like it's just okay like you don't have to be having a pet in order to enjoy yourself no. sexually you can no. just you know fuck on the floor or at least trying to make something with you, with the person who you're supposed to be like love and want to spend the rest of your life with but everyone wants sex whether you're conservative or not and how do you make that well work? if if you have awards at the end of the year for like most boring sexual life and i win <laughs> i won't be offended <laughs> Like, she was our most boring guest. She does nothing violent. Like, yeah, okay. Do you just, I don't but agree you, with, I don't agree with that because the moment that you had an hour to yourself, you masturbated. So I don't agree with that. You're the most boring at all. No, because that, some yeah, women would do the you. dishes or fucking do a load of laundry, but you're like, no, fuck that. I'm going to go, I'm going to go fucking celebrate myself. Like you said. So congratulations. I need a moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For Janelle's birthday. I got her, and her birthday was on a Thursday this year or Wednesday. I don't know, December but it, it was it was in the middle of the week, and she was working. But for her birthday, I bought her a subscription to a porn site that mm-hmm. that I thought she would like. That whole day where she's supposed <laughs> to be working, I would text her and be like, "What are you doing?" And she's like, "Oh my god, I just masturbated for the tenth time today. This website's amazing." Wow! I came home. Good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I came home and she was exhausted. I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, well, I'm glad you liked your birthday present. I felt so bad because I was like working from home, you know, air quotes, air working quotes. from home. And I'm just like, yeah, in between phone calls and conference calls, I'm just going to do this. It, it got to the point where she's like, yeah. Can you, she's like, do not renew my subscription <laughs> to that site. I've seen every yeah, video. I'll, I'll be dehydrated. <laughs> I'll die. Aren't you terrified, though, that... You're going to be in the moment and then like a Slack conference call is going to pop up and you're going to accidentally hit, except, you know, and your boss is like, hey, no, no, I use like different computers, different computers. You have to make sure you do that. I can't use my work computer to watch porn. I'll give that be like the instant way to get fired. But I want to point out something that is wrong with America right now. What is wrong with America? So there's lots of things. Oh, wrong. honey, we don't have that much. Time. Yeah, there's a lot of things. Wrong one of right the things, one of the things that I am always afraid of is that when I'm home alone, and I, if I was to masturbate and our kids walked in, they would be, they would vomit. <laughs> you know what I mean? They'd be like, that was yeah. the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. But I don't feel like you have that same fear. <laughs> like, I feel like if they walked in, you'd be like, yeah, what? What? I'm under the no, blanket. It's fine. No, I would never. I could, I wouldn't be comfortable like, oh, No, you wouldn't be guys. comfortable, yeah, but they wouldn't here. vomit. They wouldn't be disgusted. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like there's a, there's, even with them, it's like a, there's a level of acceptance walking in on mom versus dad. Like, Cause I, they like me more. I don't know. I think they like me more. Like, <laughs> Like, like they would look at your computer screen and be like, oh, that's cool. They'd look at mine and be like, dad, are those goats? What the fuck are you doing? Like, that's so disgusting. Goat porn. Yeah. A whole new genre. You know, that is kind of funny because I think that this is a totally, that was like kind of separate topic, but somehow related. Like when you and I were broken up and like Ron would be like, oh, I, I went on a date. My kids would be like, what the fuck? fuck like they'd be so angry but if i like met someone and i'm going out they're like oh mom you deserve to have the best time <laughs> you know go out and have a good time do you need a, do you need me to leave the house for a little while so you can have a good time like no i'm good we're just gonna go out for some dinner or whatever but like ron was like the bad guy uh, and I yeah because guys because like, like for for dads dads are like these like weird things <laughs> like you don't know what to do with them like like dads are what you keep in the closet <laughs> Like, you've thrown everything else away, but you keep the dad because you're not sure when you might need it again. You're just like, you're just like I'm going to keep my I'm gonna keep my dad in the closet. My dad's in the closet. I'm going to yeah. use him every now and then. Oh, my God. I'll bring him out when I need him. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So uh, there were a couple of things that I did want to talk about um, for the new Stepford that have been like just blow it up for you I mean, we totally just went on this long <laughs> run. but um you have so much stuff that you are currently working on but i wanted to tell you like i think i did the last time but i didn't have a lot of time to say it but i love your music videos and i want to do a music video with you uh, yeah. <gasps> really <laughs> yeah yeah like 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 i want to do like like i want to okay. pick a, i want to pick a song because like you did hold on which was epic you know doing that's one of your favorite songs it's one too, of my favorite songs actually. and then you did it and i was just like oh my god and it basically for the people who who don't know hold on is by wilson phillips but mm-hmm. the version you did was 
you know, someone who just doesn't have any time to themselves. <laughs> so you create a girl's day <laughs> for moms to go and have fun. And you just are waiting for that day to come. So you're just hold on just for one more day. <laughs> But yeah. even even on your day where you finally made it to the beach with your friends, you have kids all around you. <laughs> yeah. So it's technically still not your day. Not, not, yeah. Yeah, I had to wear a black wig for that because they're like, yeah, you're Carly. <laughs> like, oh, okay. That looks like a lot of fun, though. It looks like super fun. I would love it if you guys could go be in one. And then you did... I've got a couple kicking around the back of my head that I just have to, like, right well i'm surprised i'm surprised you didn't jump on shallow because i figured you would have done that one already so I, i'm pretty sure if you haven't that should be one that's kicking around in your head but you're good at oh, lyrics you, think could, about like, that one. you can give some ideas because you're really good at changing up lyrics oh around. thank you baby you are i'm just saying um also i love love yourself by justin bieber i also that's another one of my faves and you did that one with the lice <laughs> <laughs> the oh, life one. Oh my god, god. that god. one's so funny. Yeah. And we've we have I mean it it ended like five years ago. Oh where fuck. Don't even we, that, I have we, PTSD from lice. We, oh we haven't god. had lice in five years, so whew. like the last incident was five years ago. Oh that let's was not, terrible. Let's hope that we don't have another incident. That was the like that was the worst day of my life, I have to say. Like I'd mm -hmm. rather give birth to a child than deal with picking lice out of someone's head ever and again. Every time that one of the kids gets lice, Janelle gets it. Every no, I didn't time. get of it. You I did. thought I did because you get that itchy feeling because you're like, oh. You made me buy the stuff and no, you're like, I go did. through my hair. And but I'm I didn't like, have I anything, no. but I made you do it like but anyway. It's kind of like when, when you think you're sick because everyone else is sick. No, I never had it, but I thought yeah, I did. I, I was wearing a fucking hazmat suit when I picked that shit <laughs> out of their hair. I was like, you're not giving me this. Like, this is not happening. So, and all of these it things is, that it, I'm it's mentioning. It's so nasty. It's it disgusting. Is. It's the worst. It's gross. And all of these things that I'm mentioning, these videos that I'm talking about, they're all on the new step for yeah. on Facebook. So you yeah. can just go to the video section. And then you did um, the Halloween candy, which was uh, Chain Smokers and Halsey that doing Closer. <laughs> so good. So, I'm so pleased that anyone's actually watching them. Because you put them out there and you just go, I don't know. Maybe five people will watch it. But it's so fucking relatable. Like the kids come home with ten pounds of candy, and then and they go like, to hey, sleep. Give me a Snickers, and then we uh, eat candy for days. And a Butterfinger and some Starbucks. I and love Rolos. Rolos. Don't fuck. I, I like. I fuck with the Rolos. <laughs> Rolos are my jam. <laughs> well, let's go through the top. I would say I'm I'm a good and plenty girl, which I know is like coconut. Either you love it or you hate it. I like and I love it. I and, do love those. And mm -hmm. then. York pepper and patties. Those mm. are my two. But you don't get good in plenties in Halloween no. bags. No, you don't get those a lot anymore. And those are low calorie, actually. Those are low calorie compared to like the Snickers, Rolos, Butterfinger, like those things. And peppermint patties are low fat. <laughs> and if kids... I love everything that's coming out of your mouth right now. <laughs> I'm just thinking very cheap. And if kids were Please watching, they, they would have appreciated that you said, don't be the house that gives out toothbrushes. Cause no. I yeah. don't, I don't think kids are watching though. No. Kid, kids are definitely not watching the videos, but if they were, they would be like, Oh, thank you for the toothbrush shout out. Cause that's a thing. Yeah. Don't no one likes that house. My no. kids are like going to like these fancy ass places in Napa. Cause we're, we're in Napa and there's some houses that give like full on candy bars, like a whole entire Snickers. And they're yeah. like, we got to go to that neighborhood again. Yeah. It's the whole Snickers yeah. and the Mus whole Milky three musketeers, way. The whole three musketeers. Oh, it's Fuck so yeah. good. I want to be that person that can afford to do that. <laughs> oh, me if too. Somebody looked at the shelf and went, king size? Yeah. Mini. <laughs> That's what I want. That's my I goal. I have an extra $600 disposable yeah. income. I'll buy the kids. <laughs> one of these days. Yeah. One of these days. And then I did notice you started making uh, mixing drinks videos. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Those are actually old. Are they? The inappropriate uh, yeah, the pizza drink cocktails. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I feel like I yeah, just I started those seeing things. those. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm going to keep putting them up this weekend. Well, it's interesting. I bricked my phone on Thursday, and not by me. Like, it just bricked. I'm blaming it on my son. <laughs> um, so we... I. I don't, you, if you saw in the stories, he took a sh he took a hop oh, right, yeah, to, right his to his left face. Eyeball. Oh, poor guy! Oh my it's, god! He it's fell. Like, and, no, you know, he got a baseball. Oh. Right as a yeah, as a parent of boys, I'm sure you guys have experienced this too. Like 
the, the coach just literally kind of climbs over the fence. He goes, Whitney, he took a ball to the face. It's bad. And your heart just goes, yeah. Ooh. yeah. And, he, you know, he comes off the field and he's holding his eye and like, baby, let me see it. And he took it off and it was just, you know, pulsating. Oh my like God. An alien. I'm like, okay, that's, that's not good. <laughs> so we took him to the ER and he didn't have any orbital fracture. Yeah. I didn't go to med school, but I sound super smart now. And <laughs> I guess what she said is because they're constantly, you know, follow my finger. And I, what I learned was if you have a fracture in that orbital bone, what can happen is the muscle can kind of sneak into that crack yeah, and it will keep your eye muscle from being able to move left and right. Oh my God. So I was like, oh, I'm super smart now. Um, <laughs> you know, medical terms. what was I talking about? <laughs> His oh, orbital the, fracture. And the videos. Some videos. And the videos. The videos. The mixed drink videos. The, yeah. yeah. So the, oh, so my phone died. So we were in the hospital for you know, four hours with all the surgery. I mean, sorry, with the CAT scan. And, and on the way home, he goes, mom, your phone just stopped working. Oh my gosh. What did you do to it? Oh no. <laughs> well, what were you doing when it died? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Looking okay, at we both porn. Out with Fortnite videos. He was looking at porn. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, He's like, mom, I keep getting a text message from somebody from Saudi Arabia <laughs> saying something about a video. Yeah, somebody wants $150,000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it that happened Thursday night. So I mean, Ron and I were emailing back and forth because I'm like, if you're going to call me for the podcast, I don't have a phone. I'm going yeah. to have to figure out something else. It's been a very interesting three days. Like <laughs> I have realized that my bowels do work without a phone in my hand. So I was like, oh, okay. That still happens. If you don't have a phone in the bathroom. Yeah. And then you realize when you don't have your phone, how much people are on them. Yeah. Like it was almost not texting and not checking Instagram and not, you know, checking Facebook constantly. I almost felt like I was on a monastic retreat of yeah. silence. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm not communicating with the world on it at a four minute basis. And it's okay. And it's, and of, it's okay. Like it's nothing, okay. nothing falls apart if you're away from your phone for like a period of time. It's all right. And I'm not that interesting. I'm yeah. like, hmm, I think I think I'm more interesting than I am, but I'm really not. You I are. I don't need to put my thoughts together. You the are interesting. Minutes. Lots of people think you're interesting, too. So. I, I absolutely think that you're interesting. <laughs> hey, and, people, a lot of money. And one of the things that you do when you have access to the internet and you're able to talk about it is you launch this line of passive aggressive lunch bags. And yes. saying it out loud with what it is, I don't know if it fully like encapsulates how amazing it is, but basically you took and you make paper bag lunches for your kids to go mm -hmm. to school with and you write funny things on them. Like, I know that this, like, I, I think it was something about like, uh, just pretend it's Chipotle. <laughs> like, it's just like, yeah. it's yeah. just like, just take this or like, I can't, you know, I can't wait for you to grow up. So I don't have to do this anymore. Or that one that you did that I absolutely love, which was the Idris Elba. Like, mm -hmm. like you better eat this. Yeah. Cause I got up early to make this for you where I could have been dreaming about Idris Elba. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then, yeah, it was a good dream. and then you, la <laughs> you launched, uh, the, uh, I, I don't know if it's a campaign, but you started to sell these and you were like selling out left and right. And then I told you how with my wife here, cause I even said to her, I was like, baby, I want these. And she did not get them for me. <laughs> so I told you about it and That's you got right. me, you got me some and I want to read people what I have. Now I, ha I, I will never use these because I love them, <laughs> but I got my favorite one is what are you doing in my bushes, Ron? <laughs> and that comes from because we were talking about how I was a little bit of a Facebook stalker. Yeah. And then it followed with hot stalker. <laughs> and then I have a bag that says I play Call of Duty because I'm a fucking dad. <laughs> then there's I didn't realize they made Pokemon shirts in your size, which is true. <laughs> they do. They do. And then I got your wife won't buy these for you, but I will. Who loves you, baby? Aww. Whitney loves me. <laughs> these bags are amazing. And if you go to your Facebook page, which is the new Stepford, there's a link that stays persistent anywhere you go on the page that you can click on and it'll take them. you to the bags. That's awesome. How's that going yeah. for you? Are you still having to handwrite the bags? Is it or did you finally like license that out? It's funny that you asked that. I hired a business consultant to help me because it took off so fast and it went so viral so mm -hmm. quickly that we, we built the site in like four hours using WordPress. And so it's 
so kludgy and anyone that knows SEO or design or, you know, um, economic sites will just look at it and be like, Oh, that's a train wreck. Um, <laughs> so we need to, we need to scalpel that and get that back up and, and running. And then we're looking to go to urban outfitters and maybe target and glad and figure out if there's licensing opportunities there. I don't, if anybody knows in your podcast world, people there that can help us get into those stores. And then we're launching a line of gift bags and, what, one of the things we learned from market testing was not all parents are as snarky as we are. They yeah. don't actually want to write snarky things on the yeah. outside. So we're developing. You mean, like, you mean like Tamara, cards. who was like, I don't know, with my kids, I'll be like, I love you so much. Mommy loves you. No, you're a princess. <laughs> you're a prin- you're <laughs> well, the You're the best thing ever. Yeah, I'm like, wait till they get older. I know, <laughs> right? That's like, okay, yeah. that was their first year of kindergarten. Yeah, they have small children. Yeah, 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 yeah they're, they're adorable. They're, they're they small. still love them a lot. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And so we're doing a line of that you can put inside the car that are just as funny and snarky. And then we're going to do um, husband and wife ones. Because what I didn't realize that a lot of wives pack their husband's lunches. Mm-hmm. We got a, we got quite a few like, hey, can you do some for my husband? So that's great. Those are the line extensions that we're looking at. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited about them. I don't know if they're going to sell. I don't know. But I love making them. And to your point, Raul, yeah, we've got to figure out how to print them on demand. So I, I'm not handwriting them. You know, I mean, that's, I don't know. I'm not a business person. That's a, a great, person. that's such a great idea though, because who wouldn't want like a personalized message on their lunch, like to just brighten their day just a little bit, even if it's snarky, it's still funny. Yeah. And, and, and if, so, and and if I'm you glad you brought database, that up. what were you going to say? Um, yeah, that, you know, you're way beyond me on data. You, you just said the word database. Mm, my mind's blown. Um, but to Janelle's point, we are, you can, when you order them, you can give us the name of your kid, their age, what their hobbies are, and yeah. we will do things specific yeah. to them. Yeah. Um, because we're handwriting and we I can do that, that right now. I love that. No, it's such a good idea. Oh. And, and what's so good about it is that it's so, it's, it's like a dumb moment. Mm-hmm. You know, like like when you think right. about the person who created Velcro, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, like I feel horrible about myself right now. I'm that so you didn't stupid. invent that, right? And and I find it to be amazing that <laughs> that it was just something that you did because of your personality mm-hmm. and personality sells. And mm-hmm. I think that's why your videos get you know eight million views is because your personality is what created that. And you definitely oh, have. Oh, you're so nice. Mm. <laughs> Remember, I'm I'm supposed to be you your really hype are, person. You're like the, my favorite person ever. <laughs> like, so good. He's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. I try. Yeah, I try. Cool. But it's it's such a good idea. And when and when I you know I saw them when you posted it, and before you started selling them, like you would just post these things, and I'd be like, oh my god, that's so funny. And I'd be like, Janelle, look at this. And she'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool. And I'm like. It's fucking amazing. How are you not seeing this? And then when you start selling, Janelle's like, holy shit, that's amazing. And I'm like, see, told you. Like, <laughs> like I knew ahead of time. Like, like I knew from the first you one that I dead. saw. Yeah, I, like, I, I try to think that I have the pulse of America. <laughs> and I'm just, like, sitting here thinking, like, well, this, this is such a good idea. Well, my friend Meredith, we were at lunch, and she's the one that sat. I'm going to make sure she listens to this podcast. She's going to shout out. Um, she's the one that looked at me at lunch and went, you need to start selling those. Yeah. And I looked at her and I'm like, you are on crack. <laughs> no one will buy them. Yeah. And she's the one like, no, I think that you have a thing. Yeah, it, and it is. I'm yeah. like, okay. Yeah. And then BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed came around. Someone worked for, uh, what was the one that just went under? Bumble? Mm. I think it was Bumble. There was a, an editor at Bumble and she wrote it and it didn't get picked up because they closed the company. She goes, but I'm going to toss it over to like Huff Post or mm-hmm. BuzzFeed or Pop Sugar, and and she's the one that really made it happen. And once the Today Show picked it up, then that's when it went international in that's China crazy. and Japan that's and awesome. oh Ireland. And it was so. I mean, you can't buy that kind of PR. No, no. Like, and, well, and then um, then you got uh the Porto Vino. That's pretty new, right? Yeah, I've been working with them for about a year. They're one of my favorite sponsors because their bag, you can put two bottles of wine in the bag. It's like a little like bladder pouch and it has a little spigot so you can smuggle it into places. Yeah, Janelle knows about this very well. She went to, we we have Bottle Rock here and basically it's this big uh, music festival and it's about five blocks away from where we live. And we, Janelle had... uh, 
She turned her boobs into like quadruple D's or F's or whatever they were because she had. I these have bags. big boobs already, right. but I packed full. I didn't even know about Portavino, which I I will research this now that I know about this. But I just use like plastic pouches and like Capri Sun bags, but I tuck them in my tits. Yeah. And I had like two pa- two pouches of whiskey and two pouches of vodka, <laughs> like on one, like two on each tit. And then I had like a big sweatshirt over, so no one can tell. No, and you know? and we love wine, so so when I <clears throat> when I showed her your Portovino uh, videos, I was like, she was like, oh my god, we need to have those. Yeah, today. I need to bring that like everywhere with me. And I feel everywhere. like everywhere, yeah. everywhere. And I feel like the Portovino thing was perfect because you do like yourself some wine. <laughs> I do. I do. And the great thing about Portovino, and they're not paying me for this right now, but I truly, the quality of their bags, they're gorgeous leather bags. Mm-hmm. So even if you're not drinking, you're yeah. still going to want to use it because they're so I need to look pretty. So shout out to Portovino. I need to buy um, that. I have to tell you one funny story for that. Speaking of Velcro, my dad used to tell me, and I believed him, that there were two Velcro animals, the female and the male. <laughs> And you, they would catch them when they were mating because they made the sound. <laughs> and that's how they would find them in the wild. Oh, my god! And I freaking believed him for like 15 years. <laughs> and every time people would open a Velcro wallet, I'd be like, they died for you. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to make babies. But that's the difference between us growing up and our kids growing up is because our kids would be like, oh, really? Hold on. And they would go to their phone and Google yeah, it. Hold. <laughs> and they'd, they'd, they'd be like, I'm going to fact check you right now. Ron, yeah. Ron, Ron things a Velcro animal mom. Ron like referenced okay. Lego pieces when he was explaining sex to our older. I son. did, I did. I told him. I said, I said, there's an, a Lego that has the piece <laughs> that the other piece fits in, <laughs> and that's sex. Yeah, that's the penis. <laughs> that's the it's penis. A Lego piece. Yeah. Yeah. The end of story. One. Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what's funny about that is I turned that into a joke, and my son was at a one of my comedy shows, so I did a joke that was special to him, and I was like, so I, I told everybody how I explained to him sex. I said, you know, it's two Lego pieces, one fits in the other. I was like, so do you remember that time you came home and there was a bunch of adults in robes? <laughs> and he, and then I was like, yeah, we were making a castle. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, the X-Wing fighter, baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. See, Whitney's the best. Um <laughs> Also, uh, you just, guys, I have to go. I, I yeah, know, I know. I'm sorry. So just, just These so that, go so fast when we do them. I know. I know, I know. They go so fast. Okay, so everybody, just so that you know, make sure you go to the new Stepford on Facebook. That is the hub uh, where you can get all the videos that we've been talking about on our show. Also, you can go to Instagram. It's still the new Stepford, and also on YouTube. If you look up the new Stepford, I feel like Facebook is so far the easiest place to find all of the stuff that she wants you to know about. Whitney, it was such a pleasure Thank having you. you on the show. Thank you so much for coming. We absolutely love oh. you. We've been, I, I have my cheeks hurt. I've been laughing so much. <laughs> it is ridiculous. This has been a pleasure and an honor. It's so cool. thank you. Cool. And I'm so proud of you guys and for your bravery to put your, your relationship out there for people. Like I just, I think you're kicking ass. Thank so you. Good job. And thank you for having me. Thank oh, you thank you so, so much. much. You take care, Whitney. I'll hit you up later about when we're going to be in LA. We'll shoot a video together. Oh my god, I would love that. Truly, please don't flake. I won't. I won't. I promise. It'll be coming soon. Yeah. Okay. Soon. Take okay. care, Talk Whitney. To you Thank later. you. Bye. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. See, Jan- like Janelle, Whitney's amazing. She's amazing. She is so fun. Super fun. Oh my goodness. So uh, that's pretty much our show, everybody. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, just to kind of number cov- ten, right? Number ten. Number ten. Just to cover a couple of things. So what? It's just sex. dot com is up and running. Uh, so what? It's just sx is our Instagram and Twitter handle. So what? It's just sex on Facebook. Uh, you can email us at info at so what? It's just sex. Thank you so much, baby. Ten weeks of talking to you once a week in this kind of capacity has been a dream for me. It's really been a good a good time, a great time. <laughs> Thank well, you. thank you. Thank you for your idea. I feel I feel like I feel like my version of amazement was a little bit more than yours, but it's completely <laughs> fine. I'm just as amazed as you. <laughs> <laughs> love you. I love you too. Take care, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs> so what? It's just sex. Wait a minute.